I've got a little modest proposal. I think in the future, when you have a group in Congress and the Senate who can't come up with a balanced budget, they can't balance the budget, we should automatically, we as the taxpayers need to vote this in, they should automatically all be executed. All their families executed as a form of revolution. Since they can't handle balance, budget our money correctly and they can't come up with a budget or any year in which they do not balance the budget in which we're already 20 trillion in debt we can't borrow any more money that's it if they want to borrow a single penny to pay for anything if they can't balance the budget if they go over it by one penny execute all of them all of their offspring all their children grandchildren great grandchildren wipe their entire family line out as punishment you do that one time and then we hold emergency uh, Treason is the highest <laughs> crime under federal law. It either has a life in prison or you're executed for it. Why are these people still sitting here as the police chiefs? Why are they sitting as the mayors? Why are they sitting on the city councils of these cities? No, you arrest and execute the police chiefs for treason. You are aiding and abetting foreign invaders. You are giving safe passage to foreign invaders. That's treason. It's punishable by death under federal law. You round up those police chiefs. You round up their mayors. You charge them with treason. You execute them. Why haven't we gathered up all the Saudi Arabian nationals in this country? We did it with Japan. We did Japan. We took away everyone's basic rights. We can't claim that people have rights when they're the enemy or you think they're the enemy. What do we do to the Japanese Americans who were born here of Japanese descent? We put them all in internment camps just for being the children of people from Japan who had no sympathies with that country. We just needed to watch them. We put them into camps. Well, we know Saudi Arabia is the enemy. We know they're the enemy. Why aren't we uh, doing something about their nationals in our country? Why aren't we putting them into camps or shipping them back, deporting them, putting them in the camps, doing something about them? We should have seized all Saudi Arabian assets in this country, declared war on Saudi Arabia, rounded up every one of their citizens living in our country, and executed them on public television, and then fired multiple nuclear warheads at that country. We should have destroyed them. We should have literally wiped that goddamn country off the map. They should have gotten nukes, and we should have executed every single citizen of their country sitting in our country and seized all of their assets. We did it before with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and I think that was the right choice then, and I think it's the right choice now to do We're the type of people, we're not even going to give you a clean death. We are the type of people that would be like, hey, fuck this Haji. I'm going to shoot him in the gut at 300 yards and let him bleed out for a little while. And then when he's too weak to fight back, me and my friends are going to go pick him up and have a little fun with him and make him fucking talk before we feed him to the pigs. That's Texas. Even worse, we're really, really serious about revenge here. We're the type of people that we will just tell Obama, fuck you, you're a Muslim and a terrorist yourself. We're not going to listen to you. They just attacked us here and we manufacture all of your nukes. We already have our own Air Force and Navy. We're just going to go over and start nuking the Middle East. Fuck them. We're just going to go over to the Middle East and start nuking them ourselves. We'll probably start with Mecca. And then, again, Texas being Texas, when the outrage in the Muslim world goes up, any city that we see burning a Texas flag will probably nuke them too. Texas doesn't need your oil. We don't care if the entire Middle East burns. In fact, if it does, we can charge more for our oil. We have enough oil in our reserves right now in Texas to run the entire United States for five years. We could just charge more. So it's actually kind of in our best interest for the whole Middle East to burn. I think when you see a woman in a, in a uh, hijab, I think that represents the woman who says, you know what, I'm not going to conform to your way of life. I am going to stay a part of this oppressive religion because I'm in these countries I have a choice I don't have to wear this anymore I have a choice now it also means that that person is part of the invasion force so when I see that woman walking by wearing her hijab texting ignoring the person there on the ground while wearing a symbol that says I will not conform to your society and your way of life 
I am okay with being oppressed because that's my path to paradise. That's your potential terrorist. That's what that is. That is a terrorist factory. And I'm just going to call it like it is. She's a terrorist factory. That's what her womb is. Because she's going to raise her children in a belief not to conform to this way of life. I think what she's texting is Alu Akbar. Alu Akbar. Another sword has been put through the heart of an infidel. That's probably what she's texting. To live among us, but not be one of us. And to raise your children to kill the infidel. That's what that symbol on her head means, and that's what her actions walking by show. That, my friends, is the enemy in a war, right there in that photo. That's fine, but these people committed multiple felonies here. There's felonies involved. These people need to be in prison. That's where this little terrorist belongs. That's where he belongs. Belongs in prison, or he belongs in the hands of uh, military intelligence, where they can waterboard him for a couple years and find out who all those other connections are. We have every right to kill them. Their lives belong to us the moment they cross that border to do with as we please from a legal perspective. They are in our country illegally. If we want to shoot them in the head, we can do that. It's beautiful. And that's exactly what we should do to the ones we catch who can't work. They're not capable of working that 10 years, and fine, just get rid of them. You know, 9 millimeter bullet to the head in a ditch, problem solved. We can let them pick between execution or 10 years indentured servitude. You could so we could put collars around their neck with a little small explosive device. If they try to tie the collar off, run too far from a sensor, or if they try to rebel or become aggressive, you give the uh, wardens the ability to press the button and detonate it. Screw them. We're clearly the superior ones, and they're only trying to denigrate us because they're scared of us. Maybe we need to just get rid of all of them. And like I said, we could arguably justify using the other first world countries that are out there. There are countries that if you're caught inside their country illegally, they execute you. Okay? We could get away with that if we put up a memo 30 days ahead of time. In English, Spanish, several other languages, letting them know they got 30 days to vacate the country. We might have to start looking at cost-effective options. We might have to start going, well, a 30-cent bullet's a lot cheaper than a train ride. You, you, let me understand this correctly. Instead of fixing the problem, you're going to put them in prison so that we can pay billions and billions of dollars more to incarcerate them instead of executing them. Why aren't they doing their jobs? Why is this a criminal justice issue at all? These are foreign invaders. You kill them. It's very simple. This is a military matter, not a civilian criminal justice matter. This is insanity, and it's not fixing the problem. You know what? Our illegal immigration problem will go away real fast the second you treat them like what they are, foreign invaders. The reason is punishable by death. So yeah, I think we do need to crack down on this, and I think anyone that's convicted of voter fraud when Trump starts his investigation, I think they should get treason charges, uh, death penalty, public executions. You want to stop this voter fraud, that's how you stop it. You execute these people on national television. I'm sorry, we need to treat voter fraud the same way. How is that any different? That's trying to completely undermine uh, the election process, a democratic process in a, in a free country, I think that should be punishable by death. And that would include this woman. So people are saying it's too harsh. No, I think it's too harsh that the American citizens got to pay for her for eight years. She's not even one of our citizens. I say they put a bullet in her head on national television and set an example. Put a bullet in her head and then fling her body over the wall with a catapult back over to Mexico for them to deal with. I think that would be fair. And they tend to bolster and not let evolution take its course. They want to bolster and keep certain populations alive and cultures and uh, nations growing all over the world instead of just letting evolution take its course and let them die out on their own so that we're left with whatever's best, so that whatever's superior just survives organically. Vaccinations, food, foreign aid, all of these things. 
for populations that are only they contribute nothing to the human cause at all. Okay, how can we uh, cut the population in half in this region over here? How do we do it humanely at least? You know, we don't want to just come in and drop mustard bombs, but uh, how can we do it humanely? And they're not doing anything. These, these populations are growing rapidly in the third world. But, you know, as far as the Native American thing goes, look, while it was a horrible thing, I, for one, am grateful that it happened because if it hadn't happened, then I wouldn't have been born. I wouldn't be here. And, you know, if a million people got to die for me to live, I can live with that. I don't know. Call me a bad person, but I can live with that. I'm, I'm just kidding, but not really. All right, so let's try this pie. All right, we have to exterminate social justice warriors and leftist ideology in our society. We have to make them scared to speak. And the moment anyone tries to disarm these protesters, you are the enemy. I don't care if they're the enemy. The moment you want to disarm them, you become the enemy of the Constitution and the, the enemy of the Second Amendment, and I think you should be executed for it. I think everyone who is anti-Second Amendment is a traitor to this country. I think they should be tried tr for treason and executed for it. I have worked as a mercenary in the past abroad. I actually know something about advanced interrogation techniques. I used to do snatch and grabs and interrogate people out in the field as a contractor years ago. And I'm not going to go into the details, but yes, I have killed armed men in my life. Because I know that you can't provide security that has the same level of training that I have. And for those who don't understand, I trained at the farm at Langley. Anyone who knows what that is knows what that means. No, I don't talk about my past because I used to work in intelligence. I worked in intelligence until I cracked under the stress from the PTSD. And then they terminated me and told me that if I ever talked about specifically what I did, that I would spend the rest of my life in prison. You think killing people's fucking funny? Well, I can tell you that everyone I know who's ever killed anybody, myself included, from the moment you kill your first person, you're pretty well fucked in the head for the rest of your life. I still have nightmares about the, the first time I killed somebody. I still remember his brains fucking blowing out everywhere. And that shit is shit that I see in my dreams still to this day. So those of you who don't believe any of this, that's okay. I really don't give a fuck. I'm still telling my story. This is, this is what it is. And if you don't believe me, fuck you. Go fuck yourself. I don't care. For all these guys who are veterans who are standing there still screaming about your valor, stolen valor, after what I just told you, that that sounds like I'm stealing any of your valor, you know what? Fuck you, kid. You can go fuck yourself. I don't really care what you think. But I will tell you this. If you decide that you're going to come confront me physically about it, you better not be a fucking pog. You better be a stone cold killer. If you come at me aggressively, voice raised, negative body language as someone who I know is a trained killer. Because I don't flinch anymore when I hear a rifle round come by my head. When I hear that whoop and that snap of that sonic boom, I haven't flinched in 20 years from that shit. I got over that a long time ago. So if you come at me, I want you to know, son, it's not going to be me who goes in the ground. And because I've previously had security clearance and I have a completely clean criminal record, I have never been arrested. I've never gotten a speeding ticket on record, nothing like that. That it's for me, it's easy to pass. In fact, I qualify for class three weapons easily. I can pass the background checks to get suppressors, short barreled shotguns, fully automatic weapons. I have no trouble qualifying for these things legally. And I just I just want to let all these people know, and the supplement industry know, you guys forget, I moved back to Texas, motherfuckers. Bring it. I will fucking end you. Legally. No laws broken. This whole industry is a farce, and you know what? No one is going to intimidate me or threaten me into stopping. And those who think that they are, fucking bring it. It's, it's so weird that people bring this up because uh, do they live in some world where they think it's illegal to shoot someone just because they're unarmed? So this, this idea of, oh, you can't shoot someone because they're unarmed is absurd, it's illogical, and it's flat fucking stupid. When confronted in a physical conflict, I'm going to go from zero to a hundred immediately. So it's in my best interest, because I like to avoid court if possible, to completely avoid all conflicts because I know that I'm going to shoot someone who I feel is a physical threat to me and I'm not just going to shoot them one time. 
also know that I have a lot of weapons and that I train on them. Everyone knows I walk around armed and I've told people repeatedly if they come up and punch me, I'm going to kill them. Take what? I'm taking footage right now. Live video. Where's this fucking pussy? Come on, dude. I don't think we're gonna find our puss puss. I say we squeeze the people we already know. Fuck it. Said that he would be right here in 20 minutes. Right here. here. I am. See, that was the camera angle. Nowhere to be seen. Maybe they parked over here. But I didn't even come out with a rifle. Look, I don't have a rifle. All I have is a pistol. Where is this fucking pussy? What's he fucking here, scared of? He's, he's, he's got a pistol. He's got a pistol. He showed it. That's all I got. I got a pistol on. I didn't put my armor back on. I didn't put a rifle on. Pussy ass stalkers. Dude, every one, every one of these people who talk shit about me on the internet are pussy as fuck, and they're not real. They're not real. I came out here when the dude said he would be here, ready to blow his fucking brains out. Blow his motherfucking brains out. Legally, because he's stalking. I wouldn't do a day in jail for it. You know, and just like I had a rumor come down to me, probably a joke that, you know, uh, some group 4 had hired a street gang to kill me. They put a hit out on me. I'll be more than happy to kill those people when they show up. Um, they might be biting off more than they can chew. Because all I do is make ammo and shoot guns all day. Not exactly the type of person you're going to try to do a drive-by on. That's how you get some gang control. Contract it out. Those street gangs will be gone in no time flat. Especially if you put $500 ahead on them. There'll be plenty of people who'd be more than happy to make $10,000, $20,000 a piece. A real conflict with me would go terribly. Because unlike little boys, I'm a goddamn warrior. I don't fight with my fists. You know why? Because I'm a real man. I wouldn't do that. Real men kill predators. They kill rapists. They kill pedophiles. I am trained in knife fighting. Not like you guys are thinking of Kung Fu knife fighting, but actually real fighting with a knife. I am trained in them, but the purpose of a knife, of any training that I have, is uh, twofold. One, to dispatch unarmed attackers. So hand-to-hand -hand combat to give you an advantage against someone who's unarmed. And basically to kill people quietly. Uh, if you've got to defend yourself, this is still better than a bare hand. People are like, what are you going to do with an ink pen? What are you going to do with an ink pen? You get someone trying to grapple you, if you can grab their head and drive it up into here, into the throat, you can put this through someone's brain stem if you know how to do it correctly. Same thing, you can get this into someone's eye. All right, again, you jab an attacker in the eye with this, and you fight with everything that you have, they're going to back off. They're not going to want anything to do with you. No, Callie is scum. He is scum of the earth. He is the lowest piece of shit walking the face of this earth. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, Callie, you might not ever want to fucking come near me right now. You might want to forget about doing that because you've threatened me. I can legally do whatever the hell it takes to stop you now. You're a violent thug. Been in prison for violent felony. Nobody cares about you here. If you die, nobody cares. No, man, Callie's not a good person. Callie's not a good person. He's another thug. He's an animal. He either needs to be in a cage or in a hole in the ground. And his behavior... Well, you know what? Plenty of internet stuff's come to real life for me. Haven't you seen all the videos of me running people off with an AR from my home? Have you seen me keeping people's driver licenses at AR-15 point? Haven't you seen those videos? They're out there. All these brothers showing up at my house. Who sent you? It was, a, it was, a, it was an, ad. an ad. to what? It was a, it was a female, right? A female? Yeah. 
It no no. no what? Some of us here prostitute? No, no, no. I apologize. I won't be back. I'm serious. All right, better get the fuck out of here. No, you got the idea. I'm sorry. You get the fuck out of here. That's what people do where I live. When a stranger knocks on your door, they're beating on your door, you answer the door with an AR-15. Let's reiterate the things he sued me over. What did Lane sue me over? Stuff that was all true. But I lived in another country with a different set of free speech laws. See, I live in Texas now. I live in Texas now. You pull that crap here that you pulled over there for me telling the truth, I will own every last bit of everything you have left and anything you were going to leave to your children will be mine. It'll be mine, Lane. Pull that crap again. Pull it again. Do it. I would really like that money. Come on. I could put it to real good use harassing you. Over a decade ago when I was rethinking some aspects of my life, I had a shotgun barrel in my mouth and had to sit there and weigh out if I was going to pull the trigger or not. So yeah, I'm a little bit fucked up. I'm a little bit crazy. No matter how crazy you guys think I am. And some of you may think I'm crazy. You know what? That's okay. I am a little bit crazy. I don't deny that. Not like I'm in denial of the fact. So what? What's wrong with being a little bit crazy? Okay, because I'm at this level crazy right here. That's about three <laughs> levels above where I'm at. I'm a little crazy. I admit that. I understand that, though. There's a difference between knowing you're a little crazy and not knowing that you're crazy.